Good evening ladies and gentlemen, how are we getting on? Welcome back to a brand new camp build and today we're going to have a little play around with the log cabin that was recently added to the atomic shop before Fallout 76. So we're going to do a little bit of extra dressing up of this thing and make this prefab a little bit more interesting and bring it to life a little bit. So, let's jump in and take a look shall we? Okay, so, once again, we are in the same location we built our contemporary camp last time. We're just north of Summersville, that's Poseidon Power Substation there. There you go, Summersville. Camp McClintock's not far away, neither is Sun. There's 76, and just to the north of us we have Morgantown and Helvetia. We're actually on the other side of the river too, the map makes it appear, but close enough. <laughs> you can see we're between the two telegraph poles once again, we've got a nice bit of flat ground here. So first up, we're going to position a couple of foundations just as a, more or less as a guide so that I can see where I want the front edge of the log cabin to be. So line that up a little bit, it's not too bad. Snap another one on so we get a better idea of what it's going to look like. Now back up a little bit, that's reasonably uh, straight to the road. We're on a bit of a curve anyway, so... One thing I do want to make sure I avoid is that mound of earth just to the right there. Uh, that will make... Uh, hard work of sticking anything in there in just a moment but before we put the log cabin in we're going to work on a little contemporary porch on the side that's going to house our player vending and our generators as well so two foundations would be enough to go the length of the log cabin but as I say we need space for the generators as well and therefore we're going to need three so once this wants to play ball we'll snap that on there don't mind the corner piece by the way I've used here at the front I'm going to be taking that out and replacing it with a straight one because it'll just look better so, I want to close this end piece up, as we did last time we were here. So, I'll link that video in the top right corner if you want to see a more detailed guide on how to do this. But in general, we snap the foundation onto it, take the original piece out, lower the foundation down and move it a little bit forward so we can get the walls in without them having collision issues with the foundation when we replace it. Snap a wall on, snap a roof on, second roof over, snap the wall we actually want to leave in place to the roof. Now we take the roof and the foundations off, and leave our wall floating. We'll be doing this a couple more times, but as I say, the video from a couple of weeks ago will show it in far more detail, so I'll link that as I say. So we're going to nudge this foundation across to the other side, because I'm going to be going around three sides here, which is a bit of a pain to do, if I'm honest. <laughs> so we're going to repeat the process on the other side. Wall, couple of roofs, make sure we're snapped to the roof there, not to the wall that we want to leave in place, otherwise we'll have to start again. There we go. Get the wall in, now we take the roofs and the foundations off, and the spare wall. And there we go, floating wall. So to do this end piece, the third one's always the hardest, whichever way you go around, but we're going to nudge this back over so it lines up with the centre again. This is going to give us our guide for where we want the wall. But rather than having it inside out, we're going to have to sort of go around the corner a bit to avoid that. So got this one in place, snap a couple more foundations on, one on the left here, really check that this is still going to go in, it is, so foundation on, eventually, <laughs> and another one here so we're around the corner, take these two off on the front, and we should be lined up to have the wall the right way around this time, obviously it will face into the foundation. Unfortunately, that one is actually a little bit too far back, so we're going to have to make a slight adjustment and nudge it across a little bit more. A little bit towards the right here. Okay, just pull that over a little bit. The reason I've put the extra foundation in and taken the one we're going to build off of out is just so that it doesn't snap to the floating wall, because otherwise we'll have to go back and start again. So now we snap that back in, see we've got enough space, probably a little bit too much there, so nudge it back a tiny little bit. There we go. Don't worry, they're not shooting me, they're across the water. We'll make sure this snaps onto the foundation, not the walls. There we go. Now we we'll stick a wall on there, stick another one. Got the reeves in as well. The hard part with this is getting it just right so that the roof will go through the floating wall. If it's too low, it won't do that. But if it's too high, then you're going to have collision issues with the foundations underneath. So, you've got to get it exactly right. <laughs> I'm going to swap these over because I want a slightly more interesting end wall. So, use a warehouse wall and a brick wall underneath. Now we can take the roofs off and the extra pieces on the side here. 
thought the foundation might be a good idea, otherwise we won't be able to go anywhere. There we go. <laughs> and the roof. Got it. Now we can just snap this uh, contemporary foundation back in, the contemporary porch piece. So I'm using the corner one again, and it doesn't look quite right. There's a few gaps because of the slope. So I'll swap it out later. I'll do that off camera. As I say, it's much clearer if you have a look at the previous video that, as I say, by the card in the top corner, because I went through it in a lot more detail, took a lot more time about demonstrating the technique there. But with the hard part now done, we're going to line up this log cabin. Now, there's one of the major problems with this is that it doesn't have steps that will snap to it. So we're going to work around that. It's a little bit awkward to get things to sit very closely to this because you can see the logs stick out on the corners. But we'll get it as close as we can. We can nudge it a little bit further back. The idea for now is to line things up so we know where we want it to be. So we've got it as close to those contemporary pieces as possible. The roof's almost clipping into them there. And they're nice and flush on the front edge. Now we're going to stick a foundation down. Again, we're just lining up here. But to get those stairs on, I really want them to be as central to the door as possible. They won't be quite centred, because those logs sticking out in the corner will prevent me from lining up the foundation properly, as you can see. But we'll get as close as we can. And we want it to be as close to the cabin as possible as well. But just ever so slightly lower than the floor inside it. And we've got a nice little step up when we put the stairs on. Make a few more minute adjustments. There we go. Gonna be as close as we can get it. Nice and flush with the cabin. And just slightly below the level of the floor. So, next thing to do. Oh, apparently I want to go a little bit higher. <laughs> next thing to do is get this cabin out of the way, and then we'll be able to put the stairs in. So we're gonna stick that one on the inside, snap this to the side. And now we put the stairs facing the right direction. Okay, snap those on there. Now, because we've got two foundations, we can take the one the stairs are actually snapped to off, build order as always, and leave them there unsupported. Useful little trick, this. <laughs> Wish I'd known about it before now. There we go. Now we've got to very, very carefully try and maneuver this cabin back in. It's not too bad about it, but it does take a little bit of time, effort, and patience. That's why we want to make sure everything is lined up properly beforehand. As you can see, we're pretty darn close to where we want it there. Got a little bit too much of a gap between the front of the cabin and the stairs there, so I'm going to come around the side. For some strange reason, positioning this is actually slightly easier when you can't see the object that you want to sit the cabin up against. It sort of ignores a bit of the collision when you do that. Tricks the game a little bit, and it does make it kind of hard to see what you're doing, obviously, but like I say, it does allow you get things a little bit closer, at least in this instance, anyway. So we're not quite there. It's a little bit of back and forth. We need to come a little bit over to the right here, a little bit closer to the stairs. I don't think we're going to get much closer to the contemporary porch on the far side there, though. Yeah, that's as far as we're going to go. Let's have a look. Nice. <laughs> Snug as a bug in a rug. And here, as you can see, we've got a nice flush roof up against the uh, porch there as well. A little bit of a gap down the back, which is unfortunate, but by the time we've decorated, it should be fine. <laughs> so, a couple more things to do. I'm going to come around the back and put a little garden, sort of kitchen garden farm area in. Primarily because it looks good, but also because my character is slowly starving at this point. <laughs> so, we're going to fence this off. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite fit with the size of the fences. Mind you, looking at that, the cabin alone might just fit. But I wanted to extend beyond the end of it anyway, so... I'm going to pop this one up, so it sits a little more appropriately with the line of the ground there, because we've got a little patch of earth in the corner here sticking up. Now we're going to snap this one back in. We'll have to snap it to the piece we've just adjusted, rather than the original one. We'll allow it to sit there a little bit up, but... It fits again with the rise in the ground, so it looks good. Snap that one on there. Now here we have a slight bit of awkwardness because the ground is now dropping away and the game thinks that the fence is going to float. So we're going to spin it around so it won't snap, which means it'll just sit straight on the ground. Then we'll again do the same thing. 
make sure that that end one doesn't snap and just nudge it up against the other fence post. Leaves a small gap between the house and the fence there, but it's not too bad. Nobody's getting through there anyway. So I want a little gate on here, mostly for tidiness. Turns out if you want to keep the rad riches from opening your gate, <laughs> as we discovered the other week, well, the best way to do it is just lock it. I didn't realise you could actually lock these garden gates, but you can. Obviously it's not going to stop players hopping over it, so that is what it is, but it will keep the rad roaches out, which is always good. <laughs> Fortunately it's being a little finicky here about snapping back on. So, there we go, now it will snap to the gate. Get that back in. <laughs> not quite perfect, but it'll do nicely. One last thing I want to do around this side, we need some bathroom facilities. And I'm going to put a little power armor station next to it as well. So, as you push this nice and close to the log cabin, it tends to pop up, which is interesting. It doesn't actually look like it's floating, it just looks like it's standing a bit higher, which is cool. But it's uh, a little finicky about that. Entirely unnecessary, you don't have to do that at all. But I want it as far forward as I can get with the back to the road, because we at least get a little bit of privacy that way. Now we're going to stick a foundation in there. Drop that in. Generally fine with things like this, it's easier just to drop it in anywhere and then adjust it once you've already placed it. Seems to be a little easier to control that way. I'll line that up. You can see we're miles from the log cabin here, so we'll have to come around the side and nudge it in. Now the game's figured out there's actually a gap there. We're having a little bit of an issue with the front edge of this uh, toilet here, where it sticks out. It's a bit awkward, so I'll tweak that a little bit. You want to be able to walk smoothly off the foundation onto the toilet. Not that you can actually use it or anything, but... I'll know whether or not it works, you know? <laughs> there we go. And we'll just dress this up a little bit. Stairs on. Railing on the side. Power armor station in there. So we can't snap a railing on the right because the toilet's in the way. And the half railings won't snap to the long edge, so... We'll have to come up with a little workaround in a moment. Lined up this power armor station. Nice. Gonna drop a little concrete barricade in there. Nice and simple. Stash box just to make it look functional. There we go. So, decoration time. Let's have a look around the finished product. <laughs> yeah. I spent about two hours finally decorating this thing and just pondering where I wanted things and trying to get things to work and I'm really happy with the results. There's a few of the fall trees that were... Uh, well, actually these are the summer ones, but there's summer, fall and winter ones that were added in the Atomic Shot a while back. They come and they go and they're quite nice little decorations. Best to avoid putting too many though, they'll bring your frame rate crashing down. Got a few turrets in because Scorch do like to run up and bother me. They're all uh, around about level 1 usually, so it's not a big deal, you just take them out and let the turrets take them out without having to worry about them really. Nice little garden out the back. Water purifier tucked in the back there. I'm actually a little too far forward here to use the river for a larger one, but the small one will do. And a little player vending here. I did originally put the railings that will snap onto these contemporary porches in, but that forced me to push the vendors too far forward unfortunately so I decided to take them off and just line some picket fences up against it so we've got a little bit more passageway down the middle you could get through before but it, it just didn't look right you know it just wasn't quite even so generators stacked up neat and tidy nice and quiet with those Voltec ones and we've got cable running out through the window to the water purifier as well I wanted a little something here to dress it up and make it feel a little bit more secure, if not fully barricaded. So a few tyres and a little guard post there. Put a bit of decoration out front. And we'll pass nice and smoothly into the house. Tight squeeze in here. I haven't managed to get chemistry bench in, obviously, and none of the brewing stations either. So that's one drawback to this place. Fitting everything in is a bit difficult. But all the essentials are here, the stuff I use the most. Got the weapons work bench, the armor bench, and the tinker's bench. The cooking station. Had to put the sink in there, just a completionist sake. Quite happy to find that the curtains will snap over the window on this as well. You have to use the ones designed for the wooden walls, but they work, which is cool. 
Nice little bed in the corner, a couple of plushies. Give it a bit more lived in look. Would like to have had a TV on here, but as I haven't got one, the, stash, the um, camp unit went on there. Bit of a TV dinner situation. Here's a little something I was very happy about. Got a few boxes and a couple of lanterns up on the rafters there for a bit of extra storage. <laughs> I would have liked to have put a few more around the outside edge, something like that. But unfortunately, it won't have it. You can just about squeeze the odd one up there, but it doesn't look very good, so... That little central section, however, on the corners, it works reasonably well. Need a little bit of patience to get stuff up there, but it does work. Yeah, quite homely, quite happy with how this looks. So, let's have a little swing back around and we'll take a look around this place in the evening. So the lighting's not bad. I think it would look a little better if the nights were a touch darker, but there's not much we can do about that. All in all, nice little welcoming cottage on the side of the road. Yeah, quite pleased with how this turned out. There are fire breathers flag out there. A little inconsistent, it doesn't really go with the uh, settler themed log cabin, but I like the way it looks. Maybe I should have put a lantern out there by the toilet, something like that, just in case you have to use the uh, facilities in the dark, but might give it a nice little splash of colour there. But... Oh well. So we'll put a couple more lanterns as well in and amongst the crops just to give it a little bit of a glow, make the garden look a little bit more welcoming as well. In hindsight, it's probably not such a great idea since that's the side the super mutants and the scorch usually attack from, so... <laughs> this is where it lives. At least I feel welcome while they're getting shot by my turrets. There we go. The green glow from the vendors is a little unfortunate, but does uh, circumvent the need for any pit boy, uh, bolt boy rather, standees to point the way. You can see it very, very clearly. A couple of turrets enough to cover the entrance to that as well, which is nice. Once again, we've gone with the lanterns as per usual to give it that nice warm look inside. I did think about putting some posters on the walls, the ones with the lights on them, just to light things up a little bit more for a change, but it was a bit much with this build, I felt, so I wanted to keep things a little simpler than that. Nice and cosy. Apart from the fact there's no glass in the window. <laughs> yeah, I'm really happy with how this one came out. So, I do hope you folks enjoyed that video. If you did, please do hit those buttons for me. It's always very, very much appreciated. Social media links, as usual, down in the description if you want to catch up with me on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. And if you get the chance, do come hang out on one of the live streams as well. We're having a lot of fun playing 76, and we're about to start Deus Ex Human Revolution as well, which would be cool. And if you're really enjoying the content, please do consider becoming a channel member as well via the blue join button down below. The support is hugely appreciated. Thank you very much to everybody who's already done that. For now, I'll say thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.